With Blackmagic releasing the Pocket 6K, I thought we would go over Blackmagic Raw and why it's such an interesting and exciting addition to the Pocket 4K, Ursa Mini G2, and the new Pocket 6K. When we used the BMPCC 4K last year, we were extremely impressed with the quality it delivered for its very low price point. But the one thing we didn't like was the Cinema DNG format. Like other Blackmagic cameras, Cinema DNG RAW sat as the superior option for recording, offering a much higher quality image over standard RGB codecs. Budget conscious filmmakers have been lusting after affordable RAW solutions for years, with only a few cameras in the smaller form factor and price point offering this, such as the 5D with the Magic Lantern hack or the original BMPCC, both of which were also stuck using Cinema DNG, where it's slow and bloated workflow, storage demanding data rates, and limited metadata options. This is why the introduction of B-RAW is such an exciting topic. For the market that the Pocket 4K is aimed at, a compressed RAW codec is a whole new thing. A good compressed RAW codec can completely change the workflow of your project. There are a few reasons that make compressed RAW codecs awesome, but let's start with looking at the compression rates offered with B-RAW. B-RAW allows you to record in two different types of compression. Constant bitrate for optimized file size with constant bit rates. When recording in this, you have several different levels of compression. 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 8 to 1 and 12 to 1. It's best to use constant bitrate encoding when you want more predictable and smaller file sizes but still with good image quality. You also have constant quality. This is for optimized quality with variable bit rates. Within this you have two options. Q0 which has very little quantization and will give you the highest quality while Q5 uses more quantization for more efficient encoding and reduced file sizes. Having these two options means you have the ability to record in either great quality or with compression to save on storage and still keep the flexibility that comes with recording raw. Here you can see the data rates in comparison to the uncompressed Cinema DNG on the Ursa Mini Pro G2. As you can see, the difference in data rate is huge in comparison to both ProRes and Cinema DNG, which given the amount of flexibility and the quality of it is awesome. This also means you can get much longer recording times with your media and the ability to record RAW to your slightly slower SD cards instead of relying on fast V90 SD cards, SSDs and CFAST, which is great. B-RAW uses Blackmagic's Generation 4 color science, which aims to improve skin tone and color accuracy over the last generation. Another huge difference between Dynamo DNG and B-RAW is the file structure. With Cinema DNG, your clip was saved as individual frames inside a folder and the metadata features were limited. With B-RAW, your clip is recorded as one single file, and when you tweak your RAW settings in DaVinci Resolve, a sidecar file is generated or updated. This sidecar file is designed to store the RAW setting changes made in Resolve so that they can be displayed when you open it up again in another program. This means, unlike the Cinema DNG, B-RAW will look the same across different platforms. If you remove the sidecar file, the clip will prefer to the embedded metadata instead. This paired with the fact that you can actually play back these clips really easily, especially compared to Cinema DNG, will really speed up your workflow. This is due to the way that the codec has been designed to do half of the demosaic processing in camera and the other half when your footage hits post. B-RAW also takes advantage of both GPU and CPU processing. Partner that with Resolve's great hardware optimization, I'm looking at you Premiere, means that playback and renders should be nice, smooth and fast. It's also open source. Blackmagic have provided a raw dev SDK, which makes adding support for B-RAW to third parties really easy. During IBC 2019, Blackmagic released a new update for Blackmagic RAW, which brought with it a few interesting things. First off, Blackmagic introduced their RAW playback benchmark, which will tell you what type of frame rates your system can play back. When you install this, you also gain the new plugin, which gives you Premiere Pro B-RAW support. This is something that every B-RAW shooter has been waiting for. Now you can import B-RAW footage directly into Premiere Pro and you can adjust the RAW settings just like you would in Resolve. This is awesome for people who want to keep their workflow stripped back without the need for Resolve. Though you may not be getting the most out of your footage this way. With B-RAW, Blackmagic also released a RAW player. Footage plays back really nicely and accurately in this player. Blackmagic have actively said that they are welcoming other camera manufacturers to use Blackmagic RAW in their camera systems. This would be very interesting to see, so let's see what the future holds there. So overall, Blackmagic RAW really is a step in the right direction for filmmakers wanting the huge benefits of working with a compressed RAW format that really have only been possible when using much more higher end cameras until now. I also think it will entice photographers wanting to dive into the video work world that want a similar workflow and editing experience that they have become accustomed to with raw stills for years. 
want to see what it's like to work with Blackmagic Raw? Well, there's a link in the description below, which will take you to the Blackmagic website, where you can download some sample footage to see what you think of the codec. There are also download links for all the other software I've mentioned in the description also. Let us know what you think of the new codec in the comments below. And for future content, make sure you're subscribed.